So today we're going to be looking at how to scan this car behind me with Creoform's new handy scan Max. So here's the car that we're going to scan. It's a Toyota Starlet. You can see some 360 degree 3D printed um, target dice and they've just got targets in, in all directions and the software will automatically remove them upon finalizing the mesh data. We also have these scale bars in the scene and they're there so that we can improve volumetric accuracy. So for example the Handyscan Max Elite can achieve 15 microns per meter uh, and then add 0.1 of a mil for the accuracy of the Handyscan Max. We've also got some other targets on the side of the vehicle and you can see they're quite um, sparse, they're, they're spaced quite far apart. So you don't need very many targets at all. So let's see how fast we can scan it with the Handy Scan Max. Okay, so first we need to launch VX Elements. And once it's launched, you can see that the Handy Scan Max Elite has already been detected. So we can go and press next. And up in the right hand corner, we're already connected to the scanner. Um, we don't need to calibrate it because we're using the scale bars. And we have an automatic shutter, so it's automatically adjusting the laser strength to suit the material or color feedback that we are uh, measuring. So since I'm using six millimeter targets on the car, I have to use the mid range mode or standard standoff distance, which is about 600, 600 millimeters to 1300 millimeters. If I was using the 12 millimeter targets, I could use the um, the light or the far standoff distance, which is about 1300 to 2200 millimeters. So we're going to go um, standard, and I'm going to set the smart resolution to high, but it tells me that I need to increase or decrease the resolution to 3.2 minimum. So we've done that. We could say if we want to remove any little isolated patches if we wanted to and optimization mode of the mesh after scanning the data, I'll leave that on standard. But of course you can go to custom and change things if you wanted to, like if you wanted it to be automatically decimated afterwards, if you want it to remove, reduce noise, smooth boundaries, um, obviously optimize the volumetric accuracy is important. So in fact, I might just leave that on. Okay, we are ready to get started. So you just need to pick up the HandyScan Max, and on the back of the scanner, there's a big circular or dome button. Hold that down and it will start the scanning process. And we're going to acquire the targets first. So that's the first step you have to take with the Handy Scan Max. So I'm going to, get, I'm going to start near um, the scale bars because I want to acquire those first. And as I come down, you can see the bars starting to appear. And the more I go over it, the better the result will be. See, so right now it wasn't, it's got a bit of red and now it's gone fully green. So that means I've acquired the scale bar in enough directions for it to register properly. And now on the left hand side of the screen, you can see there's a distance meter. And it will, it will show you what a good range is. If I'm too far away, it will go blue. If I'm too close, it will go red. So you just want to get within the green range. And on the back of the actual scanner, there's an LED light, and that tells you how close you are to the part as well. You want to be careful. You don't want to actually move the scale bars when you're acquiring the targets. Okay, then we can work our way back around. So coming back into the video now, you can see the green light on the back of the scanner. Too far, blue, too close, red. So we just want to acquire the targets from all angles so that we can use it um, from any start position. So by acquiring the targets first, once we've got those, we can start our scan anywhere we choose.
Okay, so we're finished acquiring the targets. Then you can just hold down the button on the back of the scanner. And you can visually see how well you've captured the targets. So if you haven't spent enough time on the targets, they'll be, some of them will be red or, uh, yeah, just red. So um, that's fine. You can just carry on now at this point. And um, after you finish scanning, it will optimize it anyway. So I'm now going to hold the button down again on the back of the scanner. And that actually starts the scan session. So I can now start acquiring actual data. If it's even losing track like that, it just means I don't have enough targets. So you just need to be careful the orientation that you're aiming the scanner. So you always want to be looking at targets for it to work. And I could stand actually quite a bit further away. So the golden areas on the scan, that is basically um, smart resolution at play. So the more and more you go over the part, it will go blue from, from gold. And that means that you've achieved the highest resolution for the settings that you've used. So for example, 3.2 millimeter resolution with smart resolution set to high, the smallest detail you can capture is about, about a third of your resolution setting. And you can zoom in on the software. So if I hold the up button down on the back of the scanner, I can zoom in and, and see a little bit closer. We just look at the sheer speed of the handy scan max. And it seems it can even scan glass, which is just incredible. Grab myself some more cable. So what's cool is that the Handscan Max comes with an 8 meter and a 16 meter cable. So you can obviously choose which cable you would like to use for the project. And I probably should have put a few targets on the wheels just to make it a little bit easier for me. But what is cool is that you could, if you really needed to, you could add some targets after the fact.
So just go through and just make sure there's any little last areas that you need to scan. And it's actually very surprisingly light. Um, so it's only just over a kg. And very ergonomic. And it just has such a massive depth of field to capture so much information, like even parts that are inside of the car, like the fuel tank there. Okay, so after acquiring the data, we can go in and have a look. And you can see we've virtually got everything that we needed. So at this point, we can press stop on the scan and it will give you a preview of the result. And did you notice that a lot of the noise just disappeared? It's because we've got remove isolated patches on. So it's automatically going to remove floating bits of noise. But just keep in mind that, hey, there might be some parts of the car that you actually wanted to keep. So just, yeah, keep that in the back of your head. So for what we want to achieve today, that's really amazing. And then we can just hit finalize and produce our final STL file. And so far that's taken no more than 12 minutes. The speed of the scanner is just incredible. So for full specs, please visit our website. Uh, you can download a brochure from there. Or if you're looking to purchase one of these scanners, please visit procadsys.co.nz or email info at procadsys.co.nz. Okay, so here's the, the finished result. You can see it's pretty amazing for the resolution that we set. And depending on your application, obviously will depend on what resolution you need or, um, but if you're designing you know, new, a body kit to fit this, this would be more than adequate. We can also turn on perspective mode. So it's in 3D perspective, makes it look a bit more realistic. Also, if I go to the, to the display settings and tri triangles and wireframe, you can see that the mesh has automatically been decimated because we turned that on and it's left smaller triangles where we want detail, like around the door handle there, but put big triangles where we don't need detail. So the mesh is already optimized and ready to go. And you've got yourself a very nice clean scan to get started on. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for your time.